Previously on the Jay and Dan podcast. I'm a bit gassy tonight, so what I did, I'm sitting in Jamie's spot, but I switched Jamie's chair with Jeff's chair, and now I'm farting in Jeff's chair. Mm-hmm. Just before I came here, there was a police officer in my home. Oh, they finally got you. <laughs> See, uh, for the last year, our town has been plagued by two children who have been harassing everyone. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. They ring my doorbell like three times a day and just run. <laughs> That's so awesome. So I just, so they run down the street and I stand on the sidewalk. I'm like, I, I can see you. Mm-hmm. Petey from Toronto. I did. <laughs> What's going on, buddy? You got a question or anything? Uh, no, I'm just sitting in a Swiss chalet parking lot right now. <laughs> uh, Are you going to go into the chalet? Uh, no, no. Mm-hmm. Well, then, if you diesel <laughs> up to 57 and you diesel down the 47. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you ever make it to the Orono Bakery? Dude, I was the one that was talking about the Orono Butter Tart Festival. Mm-hmm. Who are you? <laughs> You're listening to the Jay and Dan podcast. You want to go play Nakador Ginger? <laughs> Dance. Dance. It's the week of April. Oh my God. Week of April 8th. Oh. Ooh. Power went out. Oh boy. Lights went out there. Uh, the lights have gone out. Um, the, when the lights. Oh, they're back. We're back. And the lights have been going out throughout the entire CTV building here across from the Scarborough Town Center in downtown Scarborough throughout the evening. And our understanding is CTV forgot they owned this building. <laughs> Bell forgot that they own this building. They've completely forgotten about Their it. Their online bill payment has not yet posted, so. Thanks. Hope, hopefully Mr. Cope gets to that tonight. Those dollar dollar bills, y'all. Speaking of uh, bills not posting, tell me if this is correct. Um, I had an American credit card. Forgot I had it. And uh, Classic toolsy. Found it in a drawer. I'm like, oh, I, I got points and stuff on this card. I'm going to call and see how, uh, how that's all doing. There was like $100 owing on it, and I didn't pay it within a month. So I called, and they're like, yeah, that card's gone. I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, you didn't make a payment for a month. I'm like, but Ooh. I didn't know. That credit rating is gone down <laughs> south. But I told him, I said, I didn't buy anything. Ooh. I said, how about did you buy? Is it like an annual fee or something? Like that? No, I bought something on iTunes. Like, Oh, iTunes. Did you buy an MP3 download? No, like an <laughs> I, a movie off of Apple. It would cost $100? <laughs> That's what I said. They said, well, there's interest and stuff. I'm like, this is a scam. What's going on here? Steve Jobs. So... Oh, so that's Dan's Always. credit card story. <laughs> and that's not a good ending. No, that credit card, bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye. So, but you don't have to pay the $100. I don't think so. Oh, perfect. So great. That's a nice ending. Do I? Uh, I'm not sure. That's uh, going to be like twenty grand in three months. Yikes. Maybe you should pay it. <laughs> 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 hey, I want to shout out everybody who saw the... Post I put up on Instagram of me drinking the pint at Ronnie's in Kensington Market while my family waited for me outside of the patio. As a family should do. As fam- as my family will do because that's what I tell them to do. And I tell them to wait quietly <laughs> while Daddy quietly drinks a delicious pint. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who acknowledged that I deserved that moment because I was mentioning the fact earlier on a previous podcast, and I never get to stop and have my pint anymore. So I told them to just sit there, or stand there, be quiet. And then they said, can we come on the patio? I'm like, nope. Uh, that's not happening. <laughs> you stay there. That's the equivalent of what I had to live through. Whenever we went out for dinner, my family and I, my parents at the end would order tea or coffee. That's when we're like, oh, f- Yeah, and then you're there forever. Like, who drinks coffee this slow? Yeah. Oh, you're going to have more? Yeah. We had to sit there and just stare at them, drink coffee and tea. Yeah. That's no fun. Did you ever, uh, ever touch yourself while that was happening? Okay. I don't, <laughs> don't know how that would come into play. I'll just under the table. You're bored? No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, just an idea. Something to do. 
Why would they let us go? Out, <laughs> why wouldn't they let us go play in the parking lot? <laughs> just because. Just think about what you said. Why wouldn't my mom and dad allow us children to go play in the parking lot while Come on, they it'll be fine. while they sat inside and drank coffee? We you could die. Want, we just wanted our freedom. Better to touch yourself under the table. Okay. okay. <laughs> I don't know how that My erections have returned. <laughs> hey, big news. Last week we were talking about uh, where I was going to go for part of my summer vacation, and it has been confirmed and booked. I, I can say this is fast that you did this. And we had a lot of people chiming in again on social media. Appreciate it. What did you decide? I went with what the consensus vote was on Jay and Dan's Twitter account, and that is Amsterdam. Of course, everyone voted for that. But no Dublin, because I uh, booked everything on points. Um, <laughs> I don't understand the what the, why. There was no direct flights home from Dublin. Oh, I see. But, it, but I told you you could fly there an hour and a half from Amsterdam. Uh the, but you uh, didn't want to do it. The Dublin return flight had a stop in Frankfurt, and then from Frankfurt to Toronto on Air Canada Rouge. Ooh, yeah, you don't want that. Yeah, yeah. so we weren't going to do that. So, um, yeah, it's a little Amsterdam, then some Paris, and then got a flight home in, through Zurich. I think that sounds great. That sounds like a great And trip. meeting. I am so fired up. Now maybe Kate will go with you. A friend of the podcast, Jim Pearl. I wonder if our podcast listeners remember Jim. He's one of our best friends from L.A. Just a legendary stagehand from Fox Sports Live. Veteran, now retired. Now looking to fill his days with golf, maybe some hallucinogens, and fun. And that's all available to him other than the golf in Amsterdam. Not big golfers over there? I just made an assumption based on no knowledge. Bicycles, whatsoever. big. Huge, beautiful women all over the city riding on their bicycles, just sit on a patio, nursing a Heineken, watching them go by, or whatever you decide to do. So Jim's going to be there. Mm -hmm. And so are the three of you going to be in one room, you and your lady friend and Jim? No. She's concerned, though, if we book uh, museums, do we get a ticket for him? I think you probably should. Like, basically, Jim Pearl is like your son. <laughs> Your 70-year-old son. It's like Mork and Mindy when they had Jonathan Winters and he was like old and he aged in reverse. Yeah. That's what you guys have. So this will be a test to see if you guys can have kids together. So that's going to happen in July. So it's going to be a, and a fun time. Your lady friend has not actually met Jim yet. No. So and I just she, told her he was coming the other day. So. Let's dive into that a little bit. <laughs> so you booked the trip. Yeah. And then said, Well, oh, by ah, the way, one note, by the way, a 70 year old veteran stagehand from Washington <laughs> State is going to be joining us. And as soon as I dropped that news, it was, it was received relatively fine, but I immediately FaceTime you and your wife to ease her fears. You, and you guys did uh, ease those I think, fears. I think my wife definitely. Helped to ease her because Jim Pearl is an amazing human being, and she loves Jim Pearl. And my wife, she wouldn't, she wouldn't mince words. If she thought that she was heading, if she thought your lady friend was heading into a bad situation, she would have told her. <laughs> like cancel your flight. She, yeah, right she would have sold you out immediately. <laughs> immediately, she would have done that. So yeah, I think it's. I got to be honest, and all, all jokes aside, he will be an amazing person to travel with. Oh yeah, it'll be so much fun. And you guys have a great time. Do you think things might get a little, uh, I don't know, intimate? Three of you. Dan, Dan, the dirty old man. Hey, I brought a treat. <laughs> Wait, can I just say something quick? Go, uh, when I was at Kensington after I had my pint, mm -hmm. I wanted to, I want to ask your opinion about something. I wanted over to, they have a beautiful new playground at Kensington Market. They redid the old... The old Bellevue Square Park was, uh, how do I say this? A little rough around the edges. Uh, let's just say many a crackhead. And so they, they scrapped it. They tore it all down and built it. It's beautiful now. It's so nice. But it's still Kensington, right? So Raccoons? No, no, that would be no worries. That's all over downtown Toronto, right? Okay. No, so I'm there with um, Isabel. We're playing. Her mom's elsewhere doing God knows what. And... All of a sudden, this guy, about our age, 
plaid jacket, olive pants, glasses. Looks like a bookish college professor from the prairies who maybe took a couple of wrong turns in life. <laughs> and he's out of his mind. And he comes right up to the playground and starts screaming oh, profanities. No. So this, there's like 30 kids in the playground. Oh, no. And he's like, but he's not screaming at the kids. He's talking to a woman who doesn't exist and saying, F*** you, go f*** yourself, you f***ing liberal f***. You f***ing liberal f***. You don't f***ing know me f***. And like this is happening and the kids are just like, mama. <laughs> so I immediately get on the phone and call 911. Like I just got on the phone and called the cops. And did they show up? I have no idea. I left before they could come. What did you call and say? I just said, this may not seem like an emergency, but there is a man screaming his lungs out, profanities. And there are like 30 kids in this playground. Like, can you just get the boys to swing by and maybe pull them aside and have a chat with them? Yeah, because... And she was... The lady on the other end was like, yep, no problem. They'll be right there. You don't know what state they're in, obviously. And you don't want to confront the person and then they get mad at you. You just... You just don't want swearing around the kid. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't gonna go up to the guy, but I, because my wife was like, "Oh, why did you call the cops?" And I'm like, "Well, I was actually. This is gonna sound cheesy, but I was more concerned about him. Like, I kind of yeah. thought this guy was something bad was gonna happen with this guy. And I thought if the cops come by, you know, they can kind of talk him down and uh, maybe take him over to Ronnie's, give him a pint. Oh, maybe that would be good." So, um, in the past uh, two weeks, we've each called the police on people. <laughs> <laughs> and then, when I was leaving here the other night, a car went into a a barrier holding up an overpass. Oh, like no. Kennedy overpass. car went right into it like seconds before I got there. And I assume, because the car was still smoking and stuff, so I pulled over to the side of the road. I couldn't backtrack, because I was like, you know, half a kilometer ahead of it by the time I'd slowed down. So I, maybe not that far, but anyway, I look back and I was like, what the f-? So I called the cops. I'm like, there's a car. It just smashed into this barrier. I hope he's okay or she's okay. Just want to let you know. Well, that opens up. Like, now I've gotten like four calls from the cops. Like, okay, what did you see? I'm like, I didn't see anything. I just saw the car going to the barricade. Um, they're smoking. I, I hope the guy's okay. I just called because I wanted someone to come. Like, right. Someone to come see this, this person, make sure this person was okay. Now that's like, okay, we, we just want to send you an email. You need to. Is uh, the person Okay. Some- I don't know. That's the thing. I don't even know. But, like, there's an investigation going on? I think you should just keep 911 on speakerphone at all times. I'm kind of loosey-goosey with 911. <laughs> I'm just calling. Like, I'm the guy keeping them, people on the line. Actual emergencies are happening. I'm like, yeah, there's a guy saying a few too many swear words at the park. 911. <laughs> He was pretty f***ed up. Yeah, cops, uh, I'm sitting at this red light. It's been red for a while. Uh, you guys can check this out. Hey, uh, 911, what's your emergency? Yeah, I just went over a pothole on DuPont <laughs> get, after getting groceries at Loblaws. I think <laughs> took my shocks out. <laughs> I'm going to need you guys to go figure that out. It's DuPont and Christy, I'll wait for you here. Is this Jay on right again? <laughs> Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> They've got a file on you now for <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah. That's the thing with, when I called about the guy at the park. They're like, what's your name? I'm like, Jay. They're like, what's your last oh, name? Oh, like, Jay. I was like, oh, <laughs> uh, Yeah, it's me. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> it's on right. Uh, what do you want? Sorry. Sorry. Oh, our guest on the podcast, uh, we're going to call him in a bit, is Graham Dolette, uh, Canadian golf superstar who's injured right now. He's on the recovery process. Going to talk to him about uh, how that's going and about the big win by Corey Kenny. Kenny. That was pretty cool. That was very cool. Just imagine being 27. He was outside of the top 125 last year, so he's got to play his way into tournaments, which he was doing a few mm-hmm. times this year. Then he was going to take this week off. He's Isn't like, that oh, amazing? Oh, There's oh, the Masters. And made, what, $1.3 million yesterday? Yep. And the big exception. Yeah, that's the biggie. Yeah. How sweet must that feel? Just the pressure's off a little bit. You can just mm-hmm. play. And, uh, and his wife was very funny. She had great reactions to everything. Yesterday. Probably get a few new sponsors. I would think so. He's got the big RBC. Boy, RBC is all over those, uh, those golfers. Even Ernie else. Poor Ernie has to come every year. 
RBC, that'd be a great fit for this podcast. Got any RBC folks uh, listening? Big Give us a guy. shout. Hey, the Jay and Dan podcast brought to you by Rubik. <laughs> hey, I uh, mentioned I brought in a treat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I found a device yeah. in which to get cassette tapes onto a USB. VHS cassette tapes. No, like... Um, like tapes? Cassette. Yeah, tapes. Really? Oh, oh so... Because I found new CKDJ air checks. And uh, I... Hopefully, I didn't check the USB stick. Did they... Did they make it onto the stick? They indeed did. Oh, oh boy. Oh, doctor. <laughs> now, these are so bad. I was embarrassed listening to them. Um, Perfect. So let's, uh, let's dive in here. These are from when I was in college in Ottawa, learning how to become a broadcaster, and I was not very good. smile on 96.9 CK DJ. Now something happened the other night. Maybe you people can tell me what it was, but I got kicked out of a restaurant. I don't know why it happened. All I did, I told the waiter I wanted to have some turtle soup. Well, like a lot of people, I changed my mind. I wanted some pea soup. So when he was halfway back to the kitchen, I yelled, hey, waiter, hold the turtle, make it pee. Hey, that's silly. The Eastern Ontario stop. New Music yeah, you stop. Gotta stop this. Oh Hold the turtle. Make it pee. Make it pee. What are you from the f- South? Make it pee. Make it pee. I'm Jimmy. Jimmy Stewart. CK DJ. Why? Wow. Your voice sounds so weird. Why did I think that would be great? Why did I think that was good radio? Hold the turtle. <laughs> Make it pee. <laughs> <laughs> and for a second, you wouldn't get kicked out of a restaurant for that. Uh, yeah, no, you probably wouldn't. They'd be like, yeah, great, hey, w- great, hey, waiter. great one, buddy. <laughs> hey, are you Andy Kaufman? <laughs> hey, Pee Wee Herman, get out of our restaurant. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what else do you have there? Hey, waiter. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, if you're looking for something to do tomorrow here at Algonquin College, you might want to check out the Sons of Maxwell. They're going to be at Burt's Bar from 3 till 5.30. And if that doesn't turn your crank, well, just before that, you can check out the Job Search Workshop. The topic is going to be interview techniques. That's a weird combination It's going to be a B-170. That's in the Algonquin campus of Algonquin College. And the time's going to be 1 till 2 for that one. You folks who are heading downtown for the big Winterlude Carnival, well, if you want to get around to all the events for free, OC Transpo will be running a free snow bus service along the canal during the three Winterlude weekends. The times will be for the three Saturdays and Sundays from February 3rd to February 18th. On Saturdays, snow bus service will operate from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Sunday, service will run from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. So this gives you a chance to check out everything that Winterlude has to offer. Winterlude is Ottawa's reason for having fun in the cold. Up next, a band that are really good friends. Well, heck, they're super friends. Tonight's the night to strike. It's like you're talking like this the whole time. You're like Jerry Seinfeld. Why am I on CKDJ? No no show prep. Super friends. I'm grabbing flyers off the wall of the DJ booth. Like, was this a required promo that you had to read for the OC Transpo? I think you could fill. (laughs) You could fill your your time with whatever you wanted. I just was lazy. Well, nothing's changed. That's how we we do it now. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like I have a mouth full of water and I'm afraid to spill it. It does sound like you have something in your mouth. (laughs) (laughs) And if that doesn't turn your crank... (laughs) And also, it's like sometimes you finish your sentences and sometimes you don't finish them. (laughs) Uh, Let's hear some more. Our fair city only a few short weeks ago. That's Rusty on 96.9 CKDJ. Some news to note. 
that happen right here in our little own Ottawa. That's right at the <laughs> McDonald Cartier oh, Airport. Stop. It seemed a woman. Our little own Ottawa. Did you write that down to say that? <laughs> I don't know. Here's a way I'd like to describe the city. It's our own. Our little own. Hey. Sorry. Okay, continue. Some news to note that happened right here in our little own Ottawa. That's right at the McDonald Cartier Airport. It seemed a woman tried to get a sweet potato that was just a bit too big and a bit too heavy past customs officials. Seems officials stopped Saguna Cordova at the... Where did they stop her? Oh they stopped God. her in the customs. And it seemed in her yam, if you don't know, that is a type of sweet potato, was $435,000 worth of cocaine. She tried to carry it back from Santo Domingo. So if you're traveling there on March break, look out for the yams. They could have some strange effects on you. A long, long time ago, a ruthless cat... Jesus Christ. How did you graduate? <laughs> Santo Domingo. Santo Domingo. Uh, look out for the yams. Where did uh, they stop her? Look out for the yams. They could have an effect on you. <laughs> and I'm, you can't fit $450,000 worth of Coke in one yam. Can't you? <laughs> Where did they stop her? Let's ask. <laughs> let's ask the good folks of Santo Domingo that question, Dan. <laughs> Santo Domingo. Domingo. Oh. Let's hear one more. Seems there's a job opening in the Ottawa area, folks. The job pays two million dollars a year, and you don't have to do anything. Just send your applications to the Ottawa Senators at the Palladium. Now here's broken. What? Alexander Dag, arm maybe on ninety six point nine CKDJ. Okay, wait, 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 wait. New music. Oh God! So you're talking about Dag? Trying to. That was. Trying to be current with the Sens, and that's when they still played at the Palladium. Well, it's the same arena that's just changed names. It was the Palladium, then the Corel Center, and now. The, uh, and if that doesn't turn your center. crank. <laughs> So much to unpack there. Maybe one more stuff? It's like crack. I shouldn't, but I want to. I mean, mostly the people walk by, they're like, yeah! Okay, wait, wait, I gotta set this one up. So we had to do like a little radio uh, story. So I chose to do one on buskers. And again, I remember doing this. And when I finish and hand it in, I'm like, they might ask me to be on 60 Minutes after they hear this. Mm. Here it is. Mostly the people walk by, they're like, yeah, it's great, they're having a good time. Paul's biggest day in Ottawa was when he made $230 in just over two hours. He sees playing on the street as a fun job. You get paid to practice your trade, you know, and I get paid 10 bucks an hour to stand out here and practice things that I do. So. In the 10 minutes I watch Paul, he has already collected $8. Steve Collins is one of those who gave Paul money. He feels it's an obligation. Well, I don't know. I kind of feel sorry for him, you know. Uh, they're uh, just trying to get by, doing the only thing they know how to do. This is depressing. And if I have a little extra money from, you know, a burger or something, you know, I figure I might as well just give it to him. It's the least I could do. You can see by the look in Paul's dark, hollow eyes, he's happy. <laughs> dark, hollow eyes. As he launches eyes. into yet another song. <laughs> I walk on. Four voices. I'm Dan O'Toole. You can see by the look in <laughs> Paul's dark face. Dark, hollow eyes. Dark, deep. That he was happy. Ocular cavities. <laughs> that he finally made it through another day. For f voices. <laughs> I'm Jerry Seinfeld. You can see by the look in Paul's dark hollow eyes he's happy well i don't know i kind of feel sorry for him you know wait wow this play, play that guy saying he's sorry for him i think that was my roommate so i didn't even get 
a real person. Ah, uh, see, so well, lied. I don't know. I kind of feel sorry for him, you know. That's my roommate Scott. For him, you know. <laughs> I really pulled the the wool over their eyes in that report. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. What and kind of, if that doesn't turn your crank, <laughs> what uh, what kind of grade did you get for that one? Good question. I don't know. Bottom line is you passed the That's course. Right. We should get more of uh, where I'm saying my name because I can't say my name. I say Darren Hur. Darren Hur. Because I'm trying to keep the water in my mouth. Yeah, maybe you thought if you kept your mouth wet, <laughs> then you wouldn't uh, cough on air or something like that. For voices, I'm Darren Hur. Hey, it's Dan Wetmouth O'Toole. <laughs> Mornings on CKDJ. I'm soaking wet in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to take a dive into my mouth? A lot of weird stuff happening. That's at that it, school. right, Stoff? That is it for now. Thank God. That was great. I really enjoyed that. Uh, I will need that um, that well, why? memory stick back. Why because, do you need uh, that back? Why would it's, you it, want? It's my only one, and it was like forty bucks. <laughs> Four voices. I'm down with it. <laughs> so uh, just gonna need that back. I'm there, just style. gonna need to get that back <laughs> when you get the chance. <laughs> I'm gonna need that memory stick. It's got my CKDJ <laughs> demo on it. Just in case I want to do radio again. Get me a hose. Put me back on the radio. Fill my mouth with water. <laughs> get a microphone and i will slay it on the airwaves i'm down to <laughs> I'm, I'm to... <laughs> and i'm gonna turn your crank with my wet mouth and if that doesn't turn your crank oh, God. four uh... voices i'm down to <laughs> i love how oh, you read that you're Play it again. You can hear how I say my name. Like a young Morley Safer. Four voices. I'm Dan O'Toole. <laughs> Dan O'Toole. I'm Dan O'Toole. Maybe you Dan. should uh, address the nation like that tonight <laughs> on our television program. Uh, should we give uh, Graham a call? Mm hmm. Let's call Graham, see what he thinks about your wet mouth. Graham? Graham? Yeah. Yes. yes. It, it's Jay and Dan. Hey, buddy! What's going on, fellas? <laughs> we should be asking you that. What's going on with you? I just, um, in, it was 34 degrees here in Arizona. I just got down with the, my, my kids at the pool and just got back to my condo. Uh, okay, so that's good for your back. Let's give us, let's get the update on your back. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, you know, it's been a little bit up and down. There's, I've, I've started to play a little bit of golf. It's been a lot of fun because, uh, I mean, I've missed it, in all honesty. Like, I haven't played much in the last 18 months, but the last uh, couple of weeks I've been out there a few times, and it's been good. Um, it's just been a little bit, you know, slower process than I was originally hoping and that I was kind of told by the doctors, but I'm um, just kind of, more than anything, just trying to listen to my body and do what's right. And, um, you know, I was hoping to be back sometime kind of mid-summer here, but I think now I'm just kind of trying to get focused on coming back and, September for the new season when it starts back up. What the original diagnosis? How long you said you you thought you'd be back this summer? Is that what doctors said? Yeah, and you know, like I've had this. This is the second time I had this surgery, a different disc, but the same surgery. And uh, the first time was kind of similar to the to that as well. They told me, you know, at about six months, I'd probably be back about playing at a high level. And I actually did come back at six months. Played two weeks. I played Memphis and uh, a Tigers tournament up in Pennsylvania. This is back in 2011, and I knew that I wasn't ready, so I shut it down until January. Um, so it was basically a year um, from the, my first surgery to, you know, not probably fully recover, but get most of the way there. And I had this most recent surgery in August, so, uh, you know, September will be 13 months, and I feel at that time I should uh, be ready to go. Now, you must look at Tiger and look at where he was. At, at points, he couldn't even bend down to pick up a golf ball, I don't think. And you see that he has come back. It's got to be encouraging. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's on a pretty different level than everyone else. <laughs> no, I really you are on his often. level. We compare you to him. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Thanks, fellas. I appreciate that. But, uh, 
No, it is. I mean, it's, uh, he had his um, he had two or three, four surgeries or whatever it was, kind of in the course of a two year span, and I'm obviously hoping to avoid that. Um, but uh, it is it is encouraging, and he's back playing, not just playing, but he's uh, he's back. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty fun to watch him play. I'm, I'm looking forward to the Masters here this weekend to, uh, you know, see if the old Tiger comes back to form and puts a little fear in the boys. You've uh, played a few rounds, like, in the same groupings with him, right? I played with him once. It was once. At, uh, okay, yeah. Saturday of uh, the players at Sawgrass. It was pretty cool. It was massive, massive crowds, and uh, I, uh, I got him by three that day, boys. So I, was <laughs> so I guess we know who the better golfer is. So, Graham, when you come back, exactly. what's, what's the situation? How many exep- exemptions do you get? How many events can you enter? Let us know that. Yeah, so I'll have 24 events, which is, uh, you know, as much or more than I normally play in a year. So uh, that's not really going to be the concern. It's it's more about just trying to be healthy. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have to, I think, you know, it, especially in the fall, hopefully by the time January comes around, when uh, we get out to, you know, the West Coast swing and everything, hopefully by that time I'm in really good shape. But I'm going to have to probably try to time and not play too many events in a row and just really just kind of make sure that uh, – you know, I'm not overdoing it, but I plan on playing hopefully two or three web events. You get like uh, five rehab starts, they call them, um, sometime late in the summer just to kind of see where I'm at. Obviously, you know, from a health standpoint, but it's a little different when you go out <clears throat> play with your buddies and have a couple beers at your local golf course and uh, compared to, you know, walking 18 holes four days in a row with practice rounds and that kind of thing and uh, doing it at a high level. So that will be kind of be like the last – uh, check, I guess, so to speak. But um, like I said, I have 24 events, and I've already made um, 110 points or something like that, and I need 377. So I'm kind of you know over a quarter of the way there already. So uh, it's more about just trying to be healthy and coming back and just trying to do it right because uh, I don't want to go through all this again. This is the second time I've done it, and, uh, and it's harder now. I'm 37. I was 28 the first time. Uh, you know how it is when you get a little bit older, the body doesn't recover and uh, want to do the, the things it did when it was younger. Yeah, I, t- I, I don't know what you're talking about, Graham. I, I'm <laughs> as, as good a shape now. I'm actually in horrible Have shape. Have you ever heard of the Lakota? Lakota fails. <laughs> I started taking those. It says it takes a month to work. I was taking for six weeks. Nothing. I've given up on Lakota. Lakota. <laughs> I don't know about it, no. Um, okay. Well, gr- you don't need to. Yeah, you probably shouldn't do it. That's not the advice of your doctors. I'd, <laughs> I'd say hold off on that. So you say you're 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 playing a little bit, Graham. What does that mean exactly? Are are you on the range? Or are you just hitting balls on the range? Are you actually chipping, putting? Like, wh- what does that mean exactly? A, l- a little bit of everything. I kind of discovered that uh, it actually takes a little bit more toll on my body to practice than it does to play, and because I'm now like not really worried about getting back onto the golf course until September at a competitive level. I just decided, you know what, I might as well just have more fun and just go out and play golf because, I, I mean, I didn't realize how much I missed it until the last couple of weeks and I started playing a little bit. And, I mean, my game's not obviously not, you know, sharp by any means, but there's a few times I hit a couple of good shots and it kind of, you know, got me excited. And um, So, anyway, that's kind of what I'm going to do for the next couple months is just kind of hang out with my buddies and, play men's night and uh ray whitney had asked me to go up to gaza for the member guest so i might do a little member guest uh, <laughs> tour here this summer and try to get ready that way so i'm pretty excited actually just to just to kind of be back in the game a little bit because uh you know when all i really know is golf and it's kind of taken away from you <laughs> and uh just, uh, you don't really feel like yourself you know what i mean yep when you return to the tour will the beard return um, it depends on my kids. I had a pretty good beard going. Uh, yes, you did. Just a couple months ago, and uh, they uh, they just asked me and said, "Dad, we shave your beard," and uh. I'm not going to tell my kids no. So we, <laughs> I sat him up on the on the sink beside me, and we got the trimmer out and zipped it off, and uh, they had a pretty good time. And then they told me to put it back on, but I told them, oh, "You give me six months." <laughs> it really now, worked that way. Can you give us any beard tips? We're growing beards for the entire length of the playoffs, Jay and I. But, but this is the problem, Dan. I was just going to say to Graham, I, similar situation. I was talking to my three-year-old daughter today, and and she noticed that I hadn't shaved for a day, and she said, 
Let, let's go down and you should shave. And I said, yeah, no, uh, Dan and I are growing beards and she does not like that at all. So I, I don't know if this is going to last. Uh -oh. I, can, <laughs> I, can, I could well, be in trouble. Yeah, I mean, you just, I mean, I've found that if you just, just tell just little lies to your kids, it's usually yeah. okay. You don't want to like. Um, yeah, little white wanna... lies, right? Yeah, exactly. They don't really know. Yeah, I'm going to be Santa Claus. That's what I'm going with now. I'm going to be Santa Claus, exactly. and I need to go. grow it. Yeah. Now, yeah. is there anything you need to add to a beard? Because this is going to be a two-month growth. The, uh, the only thing that I would tell you, like, I mean, I, honestly, every time that I grow a beard, I learn more each time. Like, the first couple times, I really had no idea what I was doing. It was just long. Um, but uh, in all honesty, because everyone usually quits at the itchy stage, but just a little bit of beard oil. Hmm. We'll uh, take care of that. So that's uh, once it starts getting that itchy stage, that's when it's time to start putting that, putting some oil in. Okay. Gotta get then that when it gets really oil. long, then I usually move on to like a balm type of thing, which is kind of uh, it's got a little bit more hold to it, you know. I like this. This is good advice. Hey, did you uh, <laughs> did you watch uh, Corey Connors uh, win at uh, Valero yesterday? You know what? I didn't see it, but uh, unbelievable stuff. I mean, I saw his card and I saw some of the highlights. Uh, I mean, it's just so great. There's, there's just so many good, young, talented Canadians playing golf right now. I mean, I think there's uh, four of them that have wins in the last few years. Nick Taylor, Mackenzie, Corey, and I'm missing. So, oh, and Hadwin, obviously. Um, but there's just, and just the kids coming through the pipeline. It's, uh, you know, I kind of feel like the old, just, I'm kind of like one of the old guys. Me and her now, we used to <laughs> feel like, when did this happen? I was 28 when I got on tour. I felt like this young stud, and all of a sudden, I'm kind of 37. I've been playing a year and a half. I'm like, but it, it's it's so good to see. Obviously, they're, uh, you know, they're producing some good players there at Kent State. And, uh, you know, they had a Canadian coach there. Herb, who was there for a long time. And I saw that he's going into the Canadian Golf Hall of Fame this summer. So, Rightfully so, and uh, yeah, it's it's really good to see. So, what is the um, the relationship like? Uh, because you mentioned you're ten years older than uh, Corey Connors, so uh, do you guys interact on tour? How is it with all the Canadians? Well, you know, when Corey got out there, his rookie season was uh, 2000, the fall of 2017, and that's why I played three events and I was gone. Right. And the yeah. only event that I actually saw him at was uh, Napa, because then we went over to Asia and I played two events there, and I haven't played since. So. Uh, I know Corey to kind of say hello to him, but uh, I don't really know him all that well. But, um, yeah, we all kind of hang out together. It's very clicky on tour. It's almost like high school. You have the Canadians, you have the boys from the South, you have the <laughs> California guys and the Aussies and the Europeans. And there's some intermingling in between it, but um, you got to – that's just kind of that's kind of how it is. But everyone gets along really well. But we obviously have, like, a, you know, a special bond between all of us and always room for each other and – you know, on my PJ Tour app, I have all the Canadians marked and always watching to see what's going on. Um, you mentioned you're going to watch the Masters this weekend. So, so how will it be? Will Will Daddy be in front of the big screen and the kids have to stay out of the room, or do you, do you have a setup? Do you have the buddies over? How do you How do you do it? How do you watch as a spectator? I think it, it'll be a little bit of everything. I remember um, the first year, well, the only year that I played the Masters, I was all pumped, and I used to play a lot of practice rounds with Carl Peterson and Timmy Heron and some of those older boys and Carl told me one time, he goes, yeah, the only thing that sucks about playing the masters man is you can't watch it on TV. <laughs> I was like, yeah, because it really like, I mean, from the day that I was, can remember watching golf, I sit down and basically Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, especially on the weekend. I mean, I don't leave the couch basically apart from really grabbing some food and a beer, but, um, and it, it actually kind of is true. Cause you kind of, you don't really know what's going on. Um, you go home, you know, we rented a house when we were in Augusta, and you put the highlights on, but it's not really the same because you, it's just so much fun to watch it live. You already know what happened when you get, by the time you get home. Um, but uh, it's such a special place. Like, it's, it's, it's kind of one of the things that's really driving me is, like, I really want to get back and play another Masters. Um, cause it's, it's, it's one of those things as a kid. You just dream about it, and um, it's – it's such a hard tournament to get into. I was talking to one of my buddies, Ches Reed, he plays on tour. It seems like he's just been playing unbelievable for the last 18 months, and he didn't even get in the field. Hmm. Uh, it's just it's a tough it's a tough field to get in, and that's I mean that's another awesome thing about Corey winning. You know, obviously, he just punched his ticket to jump on a <laughs> jump on a jet and go to Augusta, so it's pretty sweet.
Yeah, that was it was a life changing win, really, and you could uh, you could remark on that because all these doors have opened now for him. Yeah, for sure, and uh, I mean. I think as much as anything, like obviously I've never gotten the win, and that's the one thing that's missing in, in my career. But uh, they they usually parlay themselves into more wins. You know what I mean? Like the confidence that he's obviously playing with, because he's had a second and a third, I think, already this year. So, um, but until you get that win, you never really a hundred percent believe it. Like I always know, I've known that I'm good enough to to get a win, but I've never done it. So you, you, the doubt you know, it creeps in naturally a little bit. So for him at this stage in his career, you know, in his second year to get that win and get that monkey off his back early, um, that's the kind of thing that can really start snowballing into multiple victories and hopefully major championships. There was a lot of talk of Monday qualifiers because that's what uh, he had to win to get into the tournament. Did you ever take part in Monday qualifiers? Uh, so when I was, uh, playing mini tours, we did some, uh, web.com Mondays, but, uh, the only PGA tour Monday I ever did was actually the Phoenix open. It was my rookie year on tour and I just missed getting in on my number. I think it was like the second or third alternate. And, uh, so I was like, wow, well, all right, well, I'll just Monday, see if I can get in. If not, I'll just kind of party here all weekend. It sounds <laughs> like a pretty fun place. <laughs> so anyways, I, and I was, it, it was, it was like a cold, windy kind of rainy day in Phoenix in the winter. And it was just gross. And I, I was probably a couple over through eight holes and I was, you know, not having much fun. Our whole group was just like, we got umbrellas hanging out to the side and you're in the desert and, an official drove up in a car and said, hey, Graham, you just got in. So-and-so just withdrew. And I was like, peace, boys. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they just got in the field. Amazing. But, yeah, that was, uh, that was my only uh, Monday qualifying story as a, as a member. So it, was, uh, it wasn't successful that I got in uh, by playing well, but luckily someone else withdrew when I got in. <laughs> on a completely unrelated note, you knew we couldn't have you on again without asking you about the grand reopening of the KFC Weyburn <laughs> Buffet on April the 29th. And it's, it's an exciting event. I assume you'll be there, but if you're not going to be there, you'll be there in spirit. And again, I have to ask you the last time you made it back home to Weyburn for the buffet. Are you are you guys going to be there? I would. I like mean, if they had asked us, uh, if they had promoters. asked us, Graham, we would have been on a plane instantly for sure. <laughs> That's great. You know, uh, I actually have. I haven't been back to Weyburn since about 2012. I think all my family moved up to kind of northern Saskatchewan. So when I do go home, which is, you know, only a couple three times a year at the most now, um, it's just up to Saskatoon. And my sister lives in Tisdale, which is about an hour and a half drive from Saskatoon. My mom lives in Outlook, which is about an hour drive the other way. So we're usually up there for a week, and we're buzzing from this place to this place and seeing everyone. And then before you know, we're back uh, back home. So. I haven't actually been to Weyburn in a while, but uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't even know that the KFC buffet was reopening. <laughs> <laughs> that news, especially for you guys, and how much you like it. We're pumped about it. I mean, just any <laughs> chance to keep the dream alive. I, I love getting the vision of you going visiting in Saskatchewan because when you say you're going to the neighbors, the, the neighbors an hour away. Could, they, yeah, if, there's no one's close. <laughs> no. But everyone's still, but everyone's friendly. It's like it's like your neighbors, even if you're if you're an hour away, you still know everybody and yeah. the name of their dog and everything like that, you know. So okay, uh, so um, before we let you go, your take on your Calgary Flames. I uh, yes. saw you went to a, oh, a game near the end of the season. You saw them play what Arizona? Um, yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts? Are you are you concerned about goaltending? No, see, I'm I'm excited. I'm actually going to go to uh, Denver for games three and four. Uh, I got a good buddy of mine that I played mini tours with that lives there, so I think that'll be fun. No, man, I'm not. I'm not. I'm like so pumped. I think there's been so much negative talk in Calgary about the goaltending and everything. This is iffy, and I was like, man, they just dominated the West. The only team that beat them in points was Tampa Bay, who might be one of the best teams put together ever on paper. I'm like, Correct. why are we? Why are we nervous? We should be excited. Let's be positive. So yeah. that's how I'm feeling going in. Um, well, listen, enjoy uh, the rest of the st- you know, the Stanley Cup playoffs. Enjoy watching your Flames and uh, enjoy the Masters this weekend. And, and best of luck coming back from the surgery, man. We, uh, we're pulling for you big time, and, and we love watching you play, so we can't wait to see you back out there, man. Appreciate that, fellas. You guys do a hell of a job. We'll, uh, um, hopefully we can do this again sometime.
Graham Dillette. Thank you. What a guy. What a guy. Um, yeah, you know, it's got to be so bizarre to be a professional golfer and then all of a sudden be watching other golfers on television play golf professionally. That's just got to be... It'd be like if you and I uh, suddenly got fired <laughs> and then watched other broadcasters doing our jobs. And we'd probably watch the same way that athletes watch other athletes. You're critiquing. Yeah. I, I always watch... I always ask football players, like, what are you watching when you aren't in this game? And they're like, oh, I, wa- I love... They're never watching the football, right? They're always watching whatever position they played. Exactly. Yeah. They yeah. like the 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 view from that uh, is like a blimp cam, so you can see everything develop. Yeah, they they're always watching their own position, which makes sense. Of course, they would do that, and uh, it's like they're watching uh, tape on a Monday after a big game or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't know if I would see when I watch other sports centers, like I watch the. I'm calling them the regular sports centers, but I don't mean that to sound like derogatory. The other sports centers, I, uh, I just, I just tend to just enjoy it. I don't, yeah. I don't think of it uh, in like, oh, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have read that highlight that way. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't tend to do that. And I have my favorites, uh, like everybody else, of course. Rod Smith, number one. Uh, James Duffy, a distant thirtieth, <laughs> and then everybody else falls in between. Duffy at the Masters right now. I was talking to him today. He says it's sticky down there. It's real sticky. Ew, the humidity. Yeah. That, that's Gold Bond Central. Oh, man. I can't wait till Gold Bond sponsors the podcast. We've been asking for freaking 10 years. That would be an incredible sponsor for this podcast. Gold Bond. So, Gold Bond, if you're out there, I don't know if you have a Canadian division. Who owns Gold Bond? Like Johnson & Johnson or like what big? Gary Gold Bond. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Gary Gold Bond of Gold Bond Products. You know, my family put their name on this product 50 years ago because we had sticky thighs. You sprinkle a little bit of our magic stuff in between your legs and you're good to go. You're golden. And that's a word from Gary Goldbond. And again, if you don't have any gold bond around, you know it can use in a pinch. Salt? Cornstarch. Okay. <laughs> Salt would burn, wouldn't it? Ah! Well, gold bond burns like a... Does it? It's, but it's cold. It's like a nice cold, refreshing feeling, isn't it? It gets into places. Really? Yeah. Pee-pee hole? Sure, I all the kind of I don't know what's going on down there. Hi, I'm Gary Goldbond. <laughs> Have you had our product get inside your pee pee hole recently? There's something you can do about it. Drink seven to eight pints and piss it out. That's me, Gary Goldbond, for Goldbond Products. Oh, so give us a call, Gary. <laughs> um, <laughs> be great I- if we got off this podcast. Let me. Got- uh, Dan, phone for you. It's Gary, some guy named Gary. Hey Dan, Gary Goldbond. I was listening to the pod. We just did it. It hasn't actually been out yet. Nah, I got my ways. Anyway, we're in. <laughs> Do you want to know how much? Whatever you want. Whatever you want. I love the way you guys talk about us and our products. My family loves you guys. Sit around. Put on some gold bond. Listen to the pod. Your entire family, are they naked? Yeah, waist down naked. I family seriously- the waist down. I need some right now. I have to raise my leg up because it is, I'm dripping. It feels like I sat in a kiddie pool. Oh, too soon. Well, this studio is hot. It is hot in here. It is sweltering in here. I Don't they realize studio lights? And these are LED lights. These aren't hot, but somehow they are hot. What the hell? Well, enjoy the Masters this week. <laughs> is that the end of the podcast? It is. <laughs> So abrupt. Bye.